Alright guys, I am back with a review of Triple A's Triple Mania 20 show from August of this year. Uh, basically, they put it up on YouTube for free, the entire show. It's uploaded in three parts. I'll put the links in the description if you want to check it out. And I figured, I'll watch it. I've never seen anything like this before. This is a crazy show here. Um, I thought it was really entertaining, and if you're in the mood to see something a little bit different, I definitely recommend checking this out because it is pretty crazy. And like I said, it's on YouTube for free. Um, it's AAA, the Mexican promotion's biggest show of the year, their WrestleMania, and it's definitely worth watching. Um, so it actually had 21,000 people there, and they were a pretty good crowd too. The first match is Dark Dragon, Mini Charlie Manson, who... In Mexico, it's kind of like they can switch gimmicks. Um, if someone is like Mystico, he's Sin Cara now in WWE, so in Mexico they can just put someone else in a Mystico outfit and put him back out there. And they do that stuff with different guys. And I don't know if many Charlie Manson is like a takeoff of Charlie Manson and he's just using the gimmick, or if he was with Charlie Manson when he wrestled, I don't know. But I do know that Charlie Manson left, or I think he left, I don't even know what happened to him, but I know he was arrested for like beating up two cops in Mexico, and he beat him up so bad, like one of them had to have surgery or something, and he was going to court for this, and they said it was like really, really serious, obviously, uh, so I don't know what happened to him, if he's in jail or whatever, but, so I don't know if they put this mini Charlie Manson guy out here, but um, he was pretty good, he was in great shape. So, Dark Dragon, Mini Charlie Manson, Sexy Star, who was a woman, and Eureka, who might be a transsexual. I don't know. I'm just saying they did have another transsexual in this match, so I don't know if Eureka was a transsexual or not. Um, <laughs> and these are the heels. Versus Fabia Apache, which is another woman with um, like a Native American gimmick, I think. Uh, Phoenix, which is just a typical luchador, and Octogoncito, who look like the great Sasuke, and they have another guy in the show later on, Octagon, who apparently, he also looks like the great Sasuke, but apparently he was doing the look way before Sasuke even did it, and Pimpinella Escarletto who is definitely a transsexual. <laughs> and I, I had to look this up just to make sure because I didn't want to insult anyone because this, when I saw this, uh, um, you know, man, woman come out, I wasn't sure at first uh, because it was acting like a woman, but it definitely looked like a man. So I wasn't really sure what to think. And I looked it up and apparently that is like a type of wrestler um, that's his gimmick. It doesn't mean that's how he is in real life is what it said on Wikipedia, but that's definitely his gimmick is that he's a transsexual. So that's why I thought maybe Eureka was too. But if they were just women who weren't very attractive, I didn't want to like say that. So, um, But this was a good match here. It was fun. A lot of crazy spots. All the wrestlers start hitting dives and moonsaults, and it comes down to Fabi Apache and Eureka. And Fabi does the move where she's rolling her around the ring and then I guess Eureka just gives up or something. They said it was an arm bar but I don't know. I just I couldn't see that. It looked like she just rolled around and then won the match. Uh, but it was still a good match. And then we get Pedro El Perro Aguayo who goes into the Hall of Fame. Um, this guy comes up with a luchador who I find out later is Mascara Ano 2000 and he was talking crap to El Perro. Nothing happens though. Wikipedia says that he was challenging him to a match and Perro declined. Uh, the next match is a still cage match with Joe Leader and Psychosis versus Chessman and Juventud Guerrero versus Extreme Tiger and Halloween versus Jack Evans and Teddy Hart. Now, there was some type of stipulation here. I'm not exactly sure what it was. I think these people were put together. They didn't want to be teammates. It was just like for the stip. But what happens is everyone has to escape the cage. And the last man left in the cage has to wrestle his opponent or his partner 
in a hair versus hair match later on in the show. Um, so it was a little confusing for me. It doesn't mean that their partner who they're aligned with, like Jack Evans wrestled Teddy Hart in the cage. So they were just kind of like a team, meaning if Jack Evans was the last one, he'd have to wrestle Teddy Hart later. Um, but anyways, Juventud Guerrero comes out to enter Sandman. Extreme Tiger comes out to Lowrider, the George Lopez TV show theme. Um, and another thing I noticed here was Teddy Hart needs more wings on his outfit. <laughs> this guy seriously had like 40 wings all over his pants. Uh, but there's weapons in the cage, chairs, ladders, trash cans. Um, let me see. Hoovy and Halloween escape first. And Extreme Tiger hits a dive off the top of the cage onto both of them on the outside. This was a crazy spot. Um, this was a pretty high cage. And he jumped to the outside. Psychosis has a stapler. And he starts stapling Joe Leader's head a bunch of times. And then he escapes. Jack Evans hits a moonsault off the top of the cage. Uh, Joe Leader gets busted open. Teddy Hart hits a moonsault off the top. And then Vampiro's music hits and the place goes dark and then Vampiro is on the top of the cage and he throws uh, I believe it's Chessman he, push, he pushes Chessman off the top of the cage and he goes through a stack of tables um, on the outside now these Mexican tables are pretty strange and it made this spot way more dangerous than it needed to be because these tables don't break and I'm not talking like Japanese tables. These just kind of bend in the middle. They don't really smash. No table was broken. They use more tables later on, but they don't really like break. They just kind of bend inwards. And these tables were stacked up probably like maybe two on the bottom and two on the top. So when this guy falls off the top of the cage, the tables just kind of slide. And it doesn't really help break his fall. I mean, I guess it does break it a little bit, but he's still kind of just like bouncing off of it and falling. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty crazy spot, and it was cool to see Vampiro show up. So Leader is the last one in the cage, and he's going to face Psychosis later in a hair versus hair match. Um, then we get El Conseo, uh, which consists of Texano Jr., Cemental, and Toscaro with Octagon versus the Low Psycho Circus which is Monster Clown, Murder Clown, Psycho Clown with La Parca. This was awesome. <laughs> this is crazy, crazy stuff here. These entrances, they really put a lot of focus on entrances in Mexico because these guys, they go all out. I mean, even if they're a team, they all kind of like take their time coming out and stuff. And Oh man, the clowns come out. And they've got like a fire twirler, uh, someone riding like um, a unicycle, and all of this different type of stuff. And then the clowns come out. One of them's dressed like Batman. One of them's dressed like the Hulk. And they have like these crazy masks. I've actually seen a few of these guys because there was like some commercials for the AAA video game um, a couple of years ago, and I remember seeing these clowns. But they were definitely over here. And La Parca comes out with Michael Jackson's Thriller entrance, complete with zombies doing the dance routine. Uh, it was just a crazy, crazy thing to watch. And so much happens in these matches, it's just craziness, madness. But anyways, um, this was pretty entertaining stuff here. La Parca beats Octagon with a roll-up. Um, which took the ref forever to get over to, to make the count. And I think the Conseyo beat Octagon with a rope afterwards, even though he was on their team. I don't really know the angles, I'm just telling you what I saw. Uh, then we get Psychosis versus Joe Leader in a hair versus hair match. Um, this was... This was actually a pretty good hardcore match. And I'm not really sure the rules as far as the Mexican wrestling goes in AAA, but it looked like every match was a hardcore match. Or, I don't know, it's kind of like ECW maybe. Every, anything goes, anytime. I mean, there would be matches where a manager 
or someone on the other team who was just out there kind of like a valet would just get in the ring and start helping them beat up the guy right in front of the referee and it was okay so I don't really know how it all worked out but anyways Joe Leader this guy was a pretty good worker um, he rips off Psychosis mask and he uses his own stapler on him busting him open Leader takes a sick Hurricane Rana to the floor on the outside and when he hits the floor, you can actually see his, see his body bounce up off the mat. Uh, that was a sick spot. Um, the ref is a heel ref. He refuses to count for leader. He acts like he hurt his hand on the trash can. Uh, leader sets up a table, but sadly it breaks when he lays on it. Um, Psychosis hits a Canadian Destroyer off the top onto a ladder for the win. Um, just pretty uh, innovative spot here. He pours out some thumbtacks, and then he powerbombs Leader onto the tacks on top of a chair. So Leader has to get his head shaved, and that was it really. Just a good hardcore match. Um, they get into a fight backstage, but it's broken up. Then we get Kurt Angle and Jeff Jarrett versus Electroshock and L.A. Park. Um, from what I can piece together, this is about the bosses of AAA. Um, Dorian Ronald or Roldan, Dorian Roldan, who is teaming with Jeff Jarrett and Kurt Angle, the heels, against his father, Electroshock and L.A. Park, um, Joaquin Roldan. And they're like the owners of AAA. Uh, Pena, when he passed away, before he died, he told his brother in law, Joaquin Roldan, um, about running the promotion. So I guess what happened was they took over and they built this into an angle um, for this show where it was like them going at it. Like I said, I don't really know the angles. I'm trying to piece this together just from what I saw. I mean, I don't speak Spanish, so I, it's not like I could follow what they were saying or anything. But using Wikipedia and finding the angles and stuff, I could kind of piece that together. So anyways, the loser of this match, that boss, has to have their head shaved. So anyways, that's the stip they're working with here. But Oh man, uh, Electroshock uses the English version of Rammstein's Du Hast. L.A. Park uses Bad to the Bone and comes out in a Predator mask. And Jeff Jarrett comes out throwing tortillas. Just like all around the crowd. Uh, Angle gets Electroshock in a sleeper kind of. Um, Dorian Roldan comes in and starts kicking him. Like I said, this would happen. People would just get in and start beating up each other. Uh, Karen Jarrett gets on the apron and the ref pulls her hair. I couldn't believe this. Um, she keeps like getting on the apron, walking around the ring, and she gets on there again, and the ref grabs her hair and starts shaking it. And I was like, holy shit. <laughs> but the fans start throwing drinks at her, which cause other fans to start throwing fruit, uh, food and drinks at her. And this gets huge pops. I mean, people are just throwing all types of stuff at Karen Jarrett. When they say she has a lot of heat in Mexico, it's true. So Joaquin follows Dorian up the ramp, and then Abyss comes out. And he's in Jarrett and Angle's corner, of course, and then it's it's madness. <laughs> it's like, Abyss gets in, he's beating people up. It's all, like, legal, and it's just so crazy, like, how much stuff is going on here. It was really, really entertaining. Um... <laughs> So Abyss goes for a big splash, but L.A. Park kicks him in the face and dives on him. Ref takes a bump. Abyss chokeslams Park, and Electroshock hits a diamond cutter on Abyss. Then he hits one on Kurt Angle for the win. They go to shave Dorian's head. Let me see here. And he starts to walk up the ramp. He doesn't want to get his head shaved. And he comes back with Conan. And they talk for a while. No idea what they were saying, but they talked for a long time. And then Joaquin, the father, shaves his own head. He starts to just shave his own head. So I'm guessing he did that to take his son's place. Like, look, I know we've been at war, but I'm going to do this so that you don't have to. I guess. Um, and then they raise hands, and then his son lays him out anyways. So Angle and Abyss beat up Electroshock and Park while Jarrett holds Joaquin and Dorian shaves the rest of his head. 
This causes tons of food and drinks to get thrown all over the place. Abyss was getting hit with so much shit. <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, awesome to see fans who are that passionate, um, who care that much and are, are that invested in this. Uh, it was just really awesome to see. They were really excited for all of this. Uh, then we get El Hayo del Perro Aguayo versus El Masias for the world title. Uh, Perro uses a chair on Masias, and he puts a chair on top of him, hits a double stomp off the top, but Cybernetico pulls out the ref. Um, Perro holds Masias for Hector Garza to hit him with the chair, but he accidentally hits Perro, busting him open. Not really sure who was the heel, who was the babyface. Both guys seem to be really over, and they had other guys with him, like I said, Hector Garza, Cybernetico, and they could get involved if they, if they felt like it, so... Perro gets busted open. A doctor comes in to check on him, and Perro uh, just kicks the doctor out of the ring, and Messiah spears Perro through a table in the corner for the win. This was a decent match here. And finally, we get the main event, Dr. Wagner Jr. with Silver King, his brother, uh, who actually, if you've ever seen the movie Nacho Libre, which is one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, the guy who plays Ramses, Ramses, you are the best. <laughs> that guy is Silver King, and he was on this show. Um, so he's the brother of Dr. Wagner Jr., and they also have El Hayo de Dr. Wagner Jr. with them versus Mascara Ano 2000 Jr. with Mas Mascara Ano 2000 in a mask versus mask match. Um, also, Dr. Wagner's music is Bad Medicine by Bon Jovi. And this guy... Holy crap, he was so over here. I thought people might start going crazy and like start a riot or something um, with how bad the heels were working him over. It was pretty intense. So Mascara and his dad use a fork or something on Wagner. They try to rip his mask off and they get like the eye hole open and then they start stabbing him. I think it's a fork and he gets busted open. Um, eventually Wagner gets the fork and bust open Mascara. Uh, Wagner hits a sit-down powerbomb, but the ref does a slow count. I don't know if it's because he took a bump or if he was a hill ref. I'm not really sure. But Silver King gets in the ring with a chair to help his brother Wagner, and he turns on him. And he hits his brother and the other guy with the chair. This causes a ton of food and drinks to be thrown. Silver King was getting hit with a ton of stuff. Um, eventually... Uh, the Hills beat up a Wagner fan. I'm not really sure what happened here. There was some guy in a Wagner mask who jumped in the ring. And it looked like security tried to pull him out. But then the Hills just started beating him up. And I think it was like a fan plant. I'm not really sure what this was. Um, check it out for yourself and let me know what you think. But I think it was like a plant and they were trying to make it look like the Hills were beating up a Wagner fan too. To get more heat. Like they needed more heat at this point. But Wagner hits Mascara with a beer bottle for the win, and this was pretty good. Mascara is forced to remove his mask, and that's it. So, as soon as the Babyfaces won this match, and L.A. Park and Electroshock won the match against Jared and Angle, man, the place went crazy with uh, cheers for the Babyfaces going over. And anyways, that's my review. That's it. That's the end of the show. That's my review of Triple Mania 20, um, the AAA promotion. And this is just really, really crazy stuff. I'd like to review another one of these shows sometime in the future. And like I said, it's free. It's on YouTube. You can watch all three parts of the show. Um, part 1, Part 2, and 3, I should mention, if you want to watch it in order, use the match card on uh, Wikipedia because it'll tell you which matches in which order. Because the way they have it set up on YouTube is they'll play like one of the opening matches and then one of the main event matches. So I would watch it in order. But um, yeah, definitely check it out if you're looking for something new and different. It's really fun. It's entertaining. And I'm sure by the way it sounds, you can tell it's crazy. It's, uh, it's, definitely, <laughs> it's definitely different. So yeah, um, check out this show. Let me know what you think. Hope you guys like this video. Leave your thoughts on the show in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Bye.